going on guys? Hit pause here with a summary of a tutorial that I've made. I'm actually not going to put that tutorial up unless you guys request it uh, of where I actually went through and created it. Uh, in this case what I have created here is the ability to possess some AI characters. Uh, let me just demo that really fast here. So I'm this guy. You can see that the AI guys are just literally set to play this silly animation right which is just an upper body blend of the run animation I can I'll show you guys that as well but I can come up behind them and I can possess them and you can see that the guy that I leave behind becomes an AI okay and I am now officially controlling this guy I have the ability to feign death like I showed in the other video and I can take over this guy and I can feign death still okay and I can take over it's actually quite simple it's not a lot to it. A few little weird things that I ran into while making the uh, tutorial, but I figured them out in the end, so that's basically it. So again, I can... Uh, hey, I can't do it from the front here. I have to be behind them. So, I am a Zazel. Pretty cool. I think uh, it makes some pretty interesting gameplay elements doing this. You could have a guy stand on a, you know, stand on stuff. It would be, you know, uh, right now I have it, like I said, set to, you just have to be standing behind him. It did a very simple test, but there's nothing stopping you from being able to do it from a distance uh, by aiming something or flying around with a little brain probe or something. You can make your character like a like a, one of those disgusting worms or something and then you gotta like inch up, you know, and crawl into his mouth or something gross. Like a he tentacle hentai fucking character. So, um, that's basically what it does. I can just walk, like I said, I can walk around and I can possess any character here. Like so. All right, and again, the AI is just a very basic AI that is just set to stand there and do this. Just to do, it, the AI can be full-blown AI, right? Uh, there's nothing wrong with doing that. I just created a very simple one, and you can just you can literally leapfrog them back and forth. Okay, so how it's done is uh, the AI controller basic. Basically, I'm just going to get rid of this here. Uh, just basically, what it does is has a custom event here for get possessed which basically just sets a variable to get possessed and uh, on begin play I do run that in the beginning such that they all actually set that variable so they do start running their animation now I'll show you guys the animation uh, really quick it's done in the anim blueprint uh, I created a montage here and in the montage all I did was just name it test montage and I added the run animation to it. That's all that is. Okay, I just dragged run to here. That's that. And then what I did was in the anim graph, or the root of the anim graph, I go ahead and cache the default state machine, which is this guy here, which runs through the speed blend to get him to move and stuff and generate that final pose and it also has the jump stuff in there that was this is all standard three player stuff here I just cached this so that I could do a layered blend by bone here coming off of spine 01 and what I do is I created a slot here you just go slot default slot which is what this montage is using the default slot there okay and you have to pipe in the cached pose, used cached pose, this save pose 3882, I didn't care about the name, uh, to the source and also to the blend. Uh, you can just turn the blend on to one. And then in the event graph, what we do is, this is everything I've done after the fact. Okay, so I this is all coming off of get pawn owner. I know it's a little messy, but I just dragged that over here for quick quick uh, quickness there so we go ahead and we cast to AI controller basic as long as that works we go ahead and we get whether or not that is AI possessed variable is true if it is true we cast to my character so that we can get the anim instance then we check if the, that montage is playing uh, actually I should have that set and if it is 
not playing, then we play it. The test montage. And again, test montage is what tells it to play on the default slot, which is what tells the anim graph which one to play. Okay. So that is that. So he will play his little arm running animation. <clears throat> so on my character, I added two things to him. Number one, I added text that reads from behind. I just flipped it around 180, and it says E to possess. It's called message text here. Okay, it's just set to centered. I moved it right above his head. There's nothing to it. I also added a back trigger here, and this basically is what determines whether or not you can possess them. This is a very generic and simple uh, almost cheating method of doing this, okay? It does make it so that I have to be behind him. If I wanted to do it from anywhere, I could just simply move it, all right? Uh, you'll notice that the character changes colors. That's essentially nothing. That's all right here. On the construction script, from the mesh, create a dynamic material instance. Set a vector parameter of diffuse color, because the material comes with this parameter. And we make a linear color off of three random floats, and we make sure that alpha is defaulted to one. And that's all that is. So as I drag or move the characters around, they will change colors like so. OK, anything I do to them, basically, will make them change colors, just so we can know that we are a different character. And let's see here, and then in the actual graph. So on begin overlap, uh, this actually was not a requirement, we check if the other actor is the player character. If it is, we go ahead and we set the text, the message text, which is here, to not be hidden anymore. And we set its own variable can possess to true. Now, I'm not actually using that for anything. Under possession here, we can say I have can possess and possess target, possession target here. So then what we do is we cast to my character, because remember, we are not actually my player right now. We are the bot. So we cast that, and we set the possession target to be us, the be, being the bot mesh. Okay, possession target is actually variable type pawn. On end overlap, again, I didn't use this here, we once again check if it's equal to the player character so that the, if the bots move in and out of each other's rear, uh, rear trigger boxes, they're <laughs> moving in and out of each other's rears, they're uh, not going to fire this stuff off. It's only going to happen for us. And then we rehide it. We turn off can possess, which is uh, again just a simple boolean here that I'm not using, but could be used. Uh, I tend to always do this kind of stuff here, just to add these kind of safeguard blockade things. And then we set possession target to nothing. Okay. When you press E, we check if the possession target is valid. Okay. Very important. We officially cast our s we uh, cast the possession target to my character. We do on the message text. We set it back to being hidden. I don't know why I have that. Uh, actually, I'm gonna go ahead and keep that just in case. Uh, this would be for ourself and for our possession target. So it would turn off both both uh, texts for say me and that just just as a double check I, I think I don't need this but not that big of a deal and then what we do is we need to get the player controller okay and possess using in pawn here okay the possession target all right because remember this got set to us it's kind of a weird back and forth uh, care basically ourself to talk to us you know what I'm saying we're talking to ourself but you gotta understand there's basically two versions of us that this is this is working on this is working on the AI and it's working on us so we have just had our possession target set then we need to spawn the default controller this is hugely important because if you don't do this it does not actually become AI and that's 
targeted to self. Then we, after that, we want to go ahead and get that controller, which will now be that basic AI controller. So we cast it. As long as that works, we run this function here, the get possessed function, which again is this guy here, which just sets this variable to true. Okay. That's it. That's the whole thing. Pretty simple. Uh, one of the things I ran into while making this was I uh, actually was doing this before I was doing this. And because I am possessing this character right now, uh, I cannot spawn a default controller for him because I am the default controller right so the thing what happens is when you possess another entity you that becomes you and what you leave behind is basically a dead mesh meaning it it is the it is a character it is a mesh but it has no controller whatsoever it's been depossessed and nothing owns it anymore so doing this will set it to the AI controller. Now in the defaults here, I am in 4.7, so they have changed the place to set the AI controller. It is no longer under the category AI, it is now under the category pawn here. Okay, AI controller basic is what I set here. And that, that's it. So I can officially go behind him and take over him. Okay, let's say I want to be the green guy. Now I'm the green guy. Okay, everything still works. Like I said, I can still feign death, like I had before. All right. Now there is one caveat pitfall here, which is that if I feign death, I can possess this guy. Okay, and they don't unfeign. Now here's the thing, though. I can actually repossess him and just hit G and pop back up. This is basically a non-issue um, because all you need really to do if you were didn't want that ability to be able to still possess while you were feigned death would be to use a variable here somewhere that said was feigned so I got play dead is feigned I would need to add this so when you press the button here I don't think yeah see so, you know, at no point am I actually using that boolean anymore I pulled that out but all I would need to do is somewhere at the end here hell even right in the beginning I would just need to set this to true and then over here I would first check to see if I am feigned or not. And if I am not, then don't do it. And that would be that. Be simple, very easy to fix. I wouldn't worry about that. It's a complete non-issue. So that's it. That's that's how you can possess other AI and how you can tell what you leave behind to be basically um you know, what how do you want to what do you want to control it by? Now, if you needed to swap AI controllers, uh, you can actually go set AI controller class here before you do anything. You can say, hey, you know, I want him to be the basic AI. Okay, so I think this will work. It might need to be happening after the default controller. But now they should be moving their arms and the guy left behind doesn't anymore because he's now the, the default, the, the normal generic AI controller that the game comes with. Okay, so the one that gets left behind does not, in fact, move his arms anymore. So if I come back here, I really hate that it does that. And let's say I'll set that to basic, even though that's it's already set to basic. Let's just confirm that that is in fact actually having an effect and not just breaking stuff. Yeah, there we go. So you can say, hey, after he's been depossessed, 
I can make him be a kind of AI controller that tells him to wander around like an idiot or like to run through some behaviors where he's recovering. He starts being all dizzy and you know, you could basically you can release it to be any controller that you want at any time you want, which is so handy it's ridiculous. Now the um the potentials for gameplay here are pretty high. I think there's a lot of stuff you could do, especially if you made it so you could possess them from really far away. It could make for a very, uh, very, uh, I think pretty cool puzzle game, you know, uh, where you got to kind of manage, you know, three to 50 characters and get them all in certain spots in the world or something to, to do certain things. So like, hey, here's a trigger that's pink, you know and then I can possess this guy from over here because I can aim at him or something or I shoot like I said I shoot like a beam at him then I possess him so this guy's on the pink trigger this guy goes on a you know another pink trigger this guy goes on a you know some other trigger this guy has to do something Th this other trigger over here needs three characters so you gotta bring three over there it's also a way for players to drop in if you think about it like here's I'm Bill Here's Lewis, here's Francis, and here's Zoe. Right? So when a new player joins, they could just simply possess one of these characters. You can just say, this is, you know, this is the next player, this is the next player, this is the next player, and whichever one they choose, they can say, hey, I always want to be, you know, I always want to be Bill. So this guy's the bill character so we can figure out what uh, which character that is and we can make that you know a, a player controller number one so I believe that this would be you know this general method would be uh, a pretty close to what you'd want to do in terms of that so when a new when a new player joins instead of spawning them here right you would possess this with that and again all you gotta do is cycle through this for every player that joins player index goes up every player that leaves player index goes down or that player index gets removed and then you can tell whether or not each player index has actually been occupied right so you'd have a, a master list so probably some kind of that I would assume that that would be in the game mode gameplay blueprint right or code however you wanted to do it so that's it and hopefully you guys found that uh informative and useful if you did comment like subscribe do all that fun stuff look out again for rats coming very soon within the next uh one to two weeks on kickstarter and i'm gonna launch a campaign to try to get that game going uh if anybody is interested in working with me on that i am taking um, I don't want to say resumes because I'm offering a partnership, not a uh, not like a paid position or anything like that. But um, I am looking for a one or two partners on the project to get it going. I do need people that know their stuff. Uh, if whether or not you are, I really don't need too much art, but I'm not going to push away any uh, good artists. I do need a definitely need a C++ programmer, uh, somebody who's competent enough to go through what we create in Blueprint and translate it to C++ to work essentially exactly the same. That's what I need. So you won't have to invent code. Uh, you will just have to know enough to be able to translate what's in Blueprint to be working inside of code. Um, I do need that because uh, C++ does run more efficiently than blueprints do. Uh, I could use a level level designers, writers, uh, sound people, and uh, anybody who knows uh, the Unreal Engine in general. And like I said, I'm offering a partnership uh, for the most part, depending on what the um, contribution level is from the person uh, looking at uh, up to 50 percent 
of what the game receives. If you if I only receive one person and that person kicks as much ass as I do on the project, uh, puts in as much effort as I do on the project, then I will have no problems taking, uh, you know, going 50-50 with them. Uh, you, I just just know that I am looking for people that eventually want to take it all the way past a single game and form a company, a game development company. Uh, so if you just kind of want to get a little bit of experience here and there, I, I kind of suggest just skipping it. But if you are looking for like a future uh, in game development, then let me know and I'll talk to you. Uh, just you can send me a private message inside of uh, YouTube, or you can add me on Skype as Hit Pause. My email is hitpause at hotmail dot com. Uh, it's H I T P A W Z. So I look forward to talking to anybody about that. And yeah, again, look out for Rats on Kickstarter. If nobody wants to join me, I will do it by myself, and it'll take a little bit longer, but it will get done. So thanks for watching, and Hit Pause signing off.